I'm on sort of a new project in the Leone lab, studying metal to insulator transitions and sort of more generally strongly correlated materials. What these are, sort of in general, are just materials that have sort of unusual or unexpected properties, uh, mainly electronic and magnetic behaviors that are not predicted by classical calculations. So they tend to have sort of unpredicted behavior at low temperatures and then at high temperatures they behave according to the classical calculations. Most of the materials that are strongly correlated are the transition metal oxides. property that unites all these materials is that um, you have to explicitly account for the interactions between individual electrons to explain their properties. You can't just consider all the other electrons as sort of an average sort of negative charge puddle. You have to actually account for individual electrons that might be near each other. Say they occupy atoms that are next to each other and those electrons repel each other and you have to put a term for that into your calculation in order for these unusual properties to sort of emerge from calculations. For example, um, high temperature superconductors are a type of strongly correlated material. So these are superconductors that become superconducting, sort of infinitely conductive. They don't, current keeps flowing without any resistance at temperatures above liquid nitrogen temperature, so like 77 Kelvin or so. include half metals, which are uh, metals with respect to electrons of one spin, but insulators with respect to electrons of the other spin. For example, um, all the spin-up electrons could flow if you applied a voltage across it, but all the spin-down electrons are fixed in place. type of material that is a strongly correlated material are strongly magnetoresistant materials. So materials that change their resistance based on an applied magnetic field. The materials that I study are metal to insulator transition materials, which is exactly what it sounds like. A material is metallic at one set of temperature ranges and below a certain temperature it becomes an insulator. that I study is vanadium dioxide and it changes from an insulator to a metal at about 60 degrees Celsius. So that one undergoes a transition from a metal at high temperature to an insulator at low temperature. A transition that can be induced by temperature or pressure or by light, which is how we study it here. Vanadium dioxide, my system, in addition to undergoing this metal insulator transition, also undergoes a structural transformation, so it changes from one crystal structure to a different crystal structure. And this sort of happens at the same time, sort of in quotes, um, as the electrical change. The 
reason that we study them here with ultra-fast spectroscopy is because the transitions occur very quickly. What we're interested in looking at is on the scale, the time scale that this transition occurs, does one precede the other and can we learn something about the mechanism and whether one is the driving force for the whole transition.